Hello and welcome to part one, one of our super special Halloween stream. I'm doing this one a little bit differently. I am actually a recording and the real me is in the live chat right now, which should be appearing on the left side of the screen. So let's see how this format goes. If you like it, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the live stream. It's going to be a little different. We have some interesting and exciting and scary, spooky Halloween things happening. First, a scary and spooky thing being my hair. It's not blue anymore. Crazy, right? It mysteriously and magically turned black. The second scary and spooky thing is that I'll be working with green today. <laughs> Those of you who know me know that I absolutely loathe working with the color green, especially with colored pencils. But I decided to be brave and do this super, super scary thing for you guys. So today I will be working on this picture of mine of The Bride of Frankenstein. Many of you already have this page. It is from my published book, Nights and Mares Halloween. And I'm going to put it up as a free download for everyone who is a member of my community. The links to everything that you need that are clickable are in the video description. And I'll be popping them up on the screen throughout the show as well. And I did say that this is a very special Halloween stream. So what makes it special other than you, my lovely audience, and this, my lovely work of art? It's the giveaways. We have three huge giveaways planned for this show. And I will randomly throw them at you throughout this two hour presentation. And there are three very exciting, very different prizes, huge prizes. So make sure to stick around for the whole show and invite as many of your friends as you can. Post links to this show on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok right now as we are talking so that more people can join. One of the prizes today is a 30% off coupon to any three items in my Etsy shop that covers coloring pages entire coloring books, a 3D shadow boxes and kits, and my original art. Our second prize is very crinkly and loud. So I'm going to set it aside and then we can talk about it. Our second prize is one of these three original packs of Black Widow pencils from the three original sets is still wrapped in plastic. They're kind of vintage and collectible now. So on our second giveaway, the winner will get one of those and the winner will get to choose which one they want. And our third giveaway will happen only if we have enough people in the live chat. If there are only a few of you hanging around, I'm not going to run the third giveaway. But if it's very busy and lots of you are chatting in the live chat, then I will run the third and final super giveaway where the winner will get free access to any one of my courses in It's Easy to Draw Art Academy. My courses range from $50 to $200 and the winner can pick any course of any value and join it for free. So that's huge. And I'm only going to run that again if there are enough of you by the end of the show. So make sure to spread the word, make sure to stick around to the very end. And if you're watching this as a rerun, if you're just joining this recording, don't forget there will be part two to this stream. So perhaps you missed this one, join the next one. So without further ado, let's get rolling. And to truly honor this green coloring, I am actually working on green paper, very pale green paper, but still green. This is 65 pound green cardstock. I get the recollection cardstocks. I usually get it from Amazon or from Michaels. It's available in many different craft stores. I just happen to have Michaels next to my house. So I have literally a stack this wide of every single imaginable color cardstock paper. 
and this one is very pale jade green i thought it would be quite dramatic for this green coloring and i am starting with white charcoal just on the part that i know will be white in her hair and notice the little kitty cat with a little trick-or-treat bag that appeared on the screen different creatures will appear throughout the show to remind you guys that i work really hard for this channel to bring you all this content for the channel and for my academy and if you're feeling generous enough to give me a treat this halloween season please hit that super chat button and drop me a little something or if you're watching this as a rerun as a recording there's a thank you button underneath the video so i am going trick-or-treating this season so i will be showing up with my little trick-or-treat bag on the screen throughout the show to remind you guys please drop me a little something to say Thank you for all the work that you do. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Back to what's actually happening on the screen in terms of our coloring. White charcoal. If you're new to this channel, you're probably asking, what is this magical, wonderful thing called white charcoal? And it is my favorite tool. If you spend any time on my channel whatsoever, you will notice that I start a lot of my coloring on any kind of toned paper. I work on gray a lot. I work on tan a lot. This green is quite unusual for me. It's not typical, but I, I often work on some kind of toned paper and I started by adding my primer on my highlights with white charcoal. White charcoal isn't actually technically charcoal at all. It is chalk and binder and some other magical fairy dust that's mixed in there. But the word white charcoal stuck because it typically comes in this format in the little sticks, very similar to actual black charcoal, just in pure white. This stuff also comes in a pencil form. This The lead stem is just made out of this white charcoal, but you have the typical wooden sheath like you would with a traditional pencil. So for those of you who don't like working with these sticks, you can get them in pencil form as well. Links to all of my materials are in the video description. So what makes this white charcoal stuff so special? Well, for me, oh, there's, there's some dog action behind me. <laughs> That's all that Foxtail can handle being on camera. He's very camera shy. Maybe we'll get Shelby to, uh, to pop into the bean bag. We have two bean bags now. I don't know if you guys even know. Ta -da! There's my original lovely assistant. She has her very own bean bag that she is blending into perfectly. And speaking of blending, this right there is exactly why I love white charcoal so much is because you can grab a, a basic regular old q-tip well not literally old but you know <laughs> regular standard q-tip and blend it so nicely and so smoothly you can't do that with a white pencil so the reason that i like charcoal over pencil is because i can apply the white pigment a lot faster the white is actually much stronger with white charcoal than any kind of white pencil that i've ever tested and you can do this kind of blending and now the scary part starts from now on it's going to be lots and lots of greens and that's literally how i work you saw it happening on the screen right now when i color when i draw i have this piece of scrap paper and i test the color on the paper to see if i actually like working with it and if the color looks good to me i make a note and I make a note of the number and the name of the pencil so that I can pop the names up on the screen for you guys later on when I process the video. So if you don't care about remembering the name and the number of the pencil, you don't have to make that note. But I know that a lot of people like to keep color charts and like to keep notes and journals of the colors that they used and how they behaved and all of that. And if that's you, if you like to keep track of your colors and if you like to make color charts and compare your different pigments from brand to brand, and so on then it's a very good habit to get into as soon as you pick a pencil to work with scratch a little sample of it on your test page and make a note immediately what pencil it was and sometimes it's really hard to see because the pencil is light colored so you may want to have a, a separate tool next to you to write down those numbers me i just use the same pencil and and i work it out later <gasps> there she goes there she goes my lovely assistant in her place. <laughs> 
Aww, settle in, puppy, settle in. For those of you who are new to the channel, that is my official assistant, Shelby. The other one is Foxdale. He comes and goes. He doesn't really like being on camera. So step one for this page for the background, I took this very light green, this jade green kind of a color, and I just solidly colored the entire background. The look that I'm going for here is a magical, mysterious, completely unnatural, but very fantasy-like green glow that's behind her. And speaking of fantasy like green glows, remember that I teach an entire course on fantasy glow effects where we cover, I think, nine different glow effects, including a jack-o'-lantern and some candles and glowing potions. So if you're interested in glow effects this Halloween season, follow the link that's either appearing on the screen somewhere or is in the video description or just swing by the academy and browse all the courses. Grass green. Every single new color that I bring in to this project, I will pop up the name of it on the screen. I'm not going to keep it up for the entire time that I'm working with a pencil because it's big and orange and it's blocking half of my drawing. <laughs> so as you play this video back, you can skip back to the parts where the colors are appearing and you can color along with me and actually use the same exact pencils, the same exact colors as I'm using. Once again, if you're completely new to this channel, you will learn very quickly throughout this show and any other of my videos that you may wish to watch afterwards that I am really big on layering. I teach layering in a lot of my courses. I have courses on coloring as well as on drawing and in such courses as Fantasy Glow Effects, The Complete Guide to Gemstones, and How to Use Colored Pencils Like a Pro, which I recommend you start with. I teach a lot of this layering technique and I explain why it's so important and how to arrive at these professional artist results and not just fill in the blanks, not just fill in between the lines. So what I'm doing here with this grass green is I am starting to establish my glow effects by bringing in the grass green from the edges of my frame inwards. And like I mentioned before, this isn't a natural and realistic glow effect. This is a fantasy illustration glow effect. So there's absolutely nothing normal and natural about it, but it's going to be very striking, very visually striking and a very highly saturated. So with this green, we're coming not all the way to the edges of our character, but almost all the way. So this is your chance to practice smooth gradient transitions. The more layers of pencil wax pigment you have, most pencils are wax these days, though you may not be working with wax pencils. I actually prefer wax pencils. Most brands that I work with are wax pencils. So the more layers of pigment that you have, the smoother your gradient transitions will be. Ah, trick or treat, trick or treat. Here's another adorable bag that just appeared on the screen. Again, if you are just joining, as soon as these little bags appear with the characters holding them, that's me reminding you very shamelessly, <laughs> and, uh, very obviously, that I would very much appreciate any and all donations that you guys have this Halloween season. So drop me a treat hit that super chat button or if you're watching a rerun of this then hit the thank you button on the bottom of the screen it's below the video you can't miss it and share whatever you feel is reasonable i do love halloween and i never actually get to go out trick-or-treating so this is my version of a trick-or-treating this year back to our coloring i am announcing every single color that i work with and you will see that when the names pop up on the screen, it's the name of the pencil and the number of the pencil. And all of these pencils are PC something or other, and that stands for Prismacolor. I am doing this entire coloring in Prismacolor pencils, which is a little bit ironic since one of the giveaways today is a box of Black Widow pencils. <laughs> so you would think that I would do this coloring with Black Widows, but I am just so hooked on Prismacolors these days that I, I haven't even worked with Black Widows in a few months, 
years, I don't know, a while. I went through a period where I colored with nothing and drew with nothing but Black Widow pencils. And I feel like I still love the brand a lot, but I needed a change. <laughs> It, it, it It's almost like I worked with it too much. I started doing a lot more shows where I review different pencil brands and uh, that broke me away from doing 100% of my work in Black Widow. Although a Black Widow, the Black Widow universe has many boxes. And again, if you go back through my videos on YouTube, you will see that I am a huge, huge advocate of Black Widow. I'm not sponsored by them, but I promote them a lot. I love that brand, especially for skin tones. I love doing my portraits in Black Widow pencils, whether I'm drawing or coloring. I teach my skin to a mastery course entirely in Black Widow pencils. But I also teach you guys that you can achieve any effect with any brand of pencils. I love certain brands, but I'm also a very firm believer in that brands don't make good art, you make good art. And that's something that I am very heavy on both in my YouTube presentations and actually teaching in my academy when I teach my university level courses and it's easy to draw coffee break. And it looks like we're coming up on our next color. Yes, our next color is chartreuse. If uh, Sam, Sam Twigger, if Sam is watching this, this is for you. A couple of years ago, oh gosh, um, several years ago now, time flies crazy fast. Several years ago, I introduced Sam to the term chartreuse and the color chartreuse, and she made this amazing, absolutely mind-blowing illustration with um, chartreuse being the main color. And she's just been geeking out on this color for years and years since then. So every time I use chartreuse or see chartreuse anywhere, I am immediately reminded of my friend Sam. So huge shout out to my friend Sam in Australia. This layer is for you. So back to my whole lecture on tools don't matter. You don't have to do this color along with me in Prismacolor pencils. I am going through this whole binge season of working with nothing but Prismacolors, just like I had my, my whole binge run with Black Widows. Now it's Prismacolors. So I am just totally geeking out on them. I have a huge set. I have the 150 pencil set of, or even the bigger one. I might even have like the one bigger than that. I have the full set of my Prismacolor pencils. And I'm just playing with it and, until it's diminished completely and then I'll get a new one. But if you're following along with me, don't try to match the exact colors if you don't have the same tools. I'm certainly not going to tell you to go out and buy the entire giant Prismacolor set just so that you can do this coloring along with me. So what I want you to notice, what I want you to start getting in the habit of doing is matching the feel of the color. And once again, this is something that I teach a lot in the academy in all of my courses, because I want to teach you guys to make your own decisions. I want to teach you how to fish rather than giving you just this one color along that you can follow along with me. And that's it. Like you can copy my steps exactly. But when you're out there and on your own in the wilderness <laughs> of the coloring world, you should be able to make these decisions on your own. So our first color was a very pale kind of a jade green. Not all sets have a very rich spectrum of green, but mixing brands is also perfectly fine. A lot of us mix brands all the time. I mix Black Widows and Prismacolors a lot. I bring in my Faber-Castells quite a bit. I am a fan of castle art these days. I was kind of on a fence about castle arts for the longest time, but they are, they've grown on me. It took me about a year for them to grow on me, but finally they did. They grew on me and now I do mix in my castle arts. Zenicolor is a very good affordable brand. There's, um, there's a... Uh, a very affordable brand that I did a review of. Um, was it Brutefunner, I think? 
uh, that I did a pink coloring with as a test drive. And I was surprised at how affordable and high quality that brand was. So, you know, play around with your brands, pick the colors that actually match what you see that match the feel rather than the number, because your paper might be different. Your actual pressure that you're applying to the page might be different. So even if you match my tools exactly, you may still come up with a completely different outcome. So pigment number one, we had a pale jade green for our undertone. Pigment number two, we had like a hunter green in Prismacolor, it's called grass green. And pigment number three is this chartreuse, which can be any kind of a light salad green or even a bright yellow. If you already have an undertone of two types of green, then adding a yellow for this glow around her face will actually create a chartreuse effect. And that's again, if you're interested in how colors work, how they mix, how to pick them, Color Pencils Like a Pro is the course that you should consider taking in my academy. Links, 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 everything's in the video description. I'm not even gonna clutter the screen with it. So that's coming out very nicely. What I'm doing with this chartreuse is I'm filling in that entire area around her face, which way, which way is she facing this way? <laughs> around her face that I left very pale. Now I'm filling it in with my chartreuse and I'm not going all the way to the edge of the frame. I'm kind of fanning it out. So again, lots and lots of gradient work on this one, on everything that I do. There's a lot of gradient work, gradients, are what make amazing, amazing coloring. Gradients and layering, those are your two secrets. I would say that gradients and layering are way more important than even color choices. And color choices are more important than brands. So on the very bottom of our list of importance is the actual brand of your pencil. On the very top is your own decision-making and the time that you spend on your coloring. I spent two hours just on this stage. Well, not on this stage right now, but the entire show is going to be about two hours long. And that's because the recording is two hours long because this whole part one with the green glow and the skin tone took me two hours. And that's crazy fast, you guys. I work really fast because I have a ton of practice. I started drawing when I was three years old. Ironically, I started coloring when I was in my 30s, <laughs> when I was already an, an accomplished artist. <laughs> For most people, it's probably the other way around. But I've been making art my entire life. I practice every day for several hours. So my speed is now way up there. And I always tell my students and, and my, my fellow YouTubers and, and my followers and all of your friends who are watching right now, Speed does not matter in art. It doesn't matter how fast you go, go at your own pace. Indigo blue, it looks kind of black on the screen, but this is a very dark blue color called indigo blue. So again, you don't have to try to match the name and indigo blue in a different pencil set may look completely different from this indigo blue that I have in the Prisma color set. But what we're looking for is a deep dark blue that's closer to the green side on our color wheel than it is to the purple side. An ultramarine blue, for instance, would be closer to the purple side. Indigo is tricky because the word indigo is deceiving. The word indigo literally describes both purple and blue. And there's a very interesting history there. Back in the day, people didn't used to actually perceive the color blue as well as we perceive it now. Blue is the very latest addition to our color collection that we're able to perceive as human beings. So back in the day, people literally didn't see the color blue. They described the ocean as wine colored and purple. It's, it's quite fascinating. And uh, the color indigo, which comes from the indigo plant, also was described as purple. So to this day, the color indigo if you look it up online, if you search for samples of indigo pigment, you will see both purple and blue, and it literally applies to both. And that's why I keep repeating, don't rely on names because some of them literally have double meaning. Some of them are very deceiving. This particular indigo blue in the Prismacolor set 
is closer to the green end of the spectrum of the blue than it is to the purple side of the spectrum. And again, all of my color theory students, all of my pencils pro students, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I, when I refer to the color wheel and on which end a certain things are appearing. So with this very dark blue that has absolutely nothing to do with purple, but has more to do with green, we are once again adding a little bit of a gradient transition from the outside in, but notice what I'm doing this time. I'm doing something different. You obviously have choices here. You can create the same kind of smooth gradient transition and completely, as we did with grass green, and completely ignore the little swirl designs that I have in there. And that's always an option. A lot of my coloring pages have super intricate background designs, like that wallpaper that we're going to have to tackle on part two of this show. But uh, a lot of these designs are too detailed uh, to color within any reasonable amount of time. It would take hours and hours and hours. So I often even recommend to my colorists to not bother with the details in the background and just do a whole wash over the whole thing. Although some people prefer the meticulous nature of coloring patterns. So whichever you prefer. This pattern with the swirls behind, um, behind our bride's face is a pretty simple pattern. It's not as daunting as that wallpaper with the skulls behind her. And so what I did here with the gradient transition is I came in with my indigo blue just between the swirl patterns so that there's a little bit of a texture now forming. And that turned out to be very cool. And I want to bring out the swirls as slightly lighter now. So I'm going to bring in my Prismacolor white. Now, if you're just joining, I already applied white pigment to the hair strand and the face of our character. And that part I did with white charcoal. Notice that now I'm not using white charcoal anymore. I'm using an actual white pencil. Why is that? I am actually going to drink my coffee and ask that question in the live chat. Those of you who are my students and my followers, or even if you're new to the show, let me know in the live chat. Where's the live chat? I think, oh, it's there. <laughs> let me know in the live chat right now. Why am I using a white Prismacolor pencil in this step and not white charcoal that I so highly praise? I will wait. And slurp. I bet that all of you answered because you can't add white charcoal over colored pencil. And that is 100% correct. You cannot add white charcoal over any layers of colored pencil. That's the only drawback. And that is why I always start with white charcoal on clean paper and then add my pigment afterwards. The white Prismacolor pencil, on the other hand, works brilliantly over other pigments. Now, you're obviously not going to get a pure white pigment. It's just to water it down a little bit and just to give it a little bit more body, which is exactly what's happening here right now. I'm going over these swirls with my white pencil, just giving them a little bit more texture. Some of them look like they're closer and then the background is a little bit further back. I'm not going to go crazy with this background and make it super 3D because that will take away from all the detail of her face, which we really want to be 3D. But a little bit of that nuance in the background is going to make it just that much more interesting. So I hope this is giving you some ideas. I'm sure that you're going through all sorts of fun Halloween coloring this season. There are lots of artists who are posting their new works on Etsy and in other places in their own communities where they're giving away free pages. I have a ton of new Halloween pages. They're up in my Etsy shop. They're, my patrons get pages. Like there's, there's a ton of Halloween content that I produce every year. And you may be coloring in a book, Different styles, different artists, lots of different levels of detail. So I hope things like that give you some inspiration on how to tackle them all. The other thing that I'm very big on, especially teaching in my academy, is talking about pressure. All of my art and coloring is highly detailed. And when I work with color, I like to really bring it out and it's super bright and vivid if it's a colorful piece and it's super high contrast if it's a monochromatic piece. 
but I rarely apply any pressure to my page at all. This white pencil may appear deceiving on the screen because my white Prismacolor pencils, all of them, all of a sudden are really crumbly. Not really sure what's up with that. If any of you know of this phenomenon, let me know right now in the chat or later in the future in the comments below the video um, if this has happened to you. I've had no complaints about Prismacolor pencils quality ever, but these days my white pigments, all of my white pencils are just super crumbly and I keep them all in the same place. So I don't know. I live in Las Vegas. I live in the desert. It's super dry here. I don't know. Uh, the house is, is a nicer temperature and humidity than outside, but it's not super humid. So I don't know. The other pencils are all in tip top shape, but white for some reason is just really crumbly, almost like it's too humid, like not as if it's too dry. I don't know. So <laughs> white, <laughs> my white pencils are somehow tainted and, and they're super crumbly. But all of my other pencils that you can see me using on the screen, are in tip top shape and are not crumbly and I'm not applying any, pre well, I'm applying some pressure obviously because I'm leaving some pigment on the page, but I'm applying very little pressure. So how do I achieve these amazing results with high saturations and, and super bright contrast? And that is layering, layers, 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 layers go a long way. So even if you're working with a single color wash for the background, it's much better to do a layer after layer after layer of soft shading of the same color than it is to grind that pigment into the page. The more smooth layers you add, the better the effect. Ah! Another trick or treat cat. I hope you guys have been very generous with me during this stream. If you haven't, now is your chance to drop a little something in my little trick or treat bag and say thank you for all the work that I do for you guys throughout the year. So if you have been, thank you so much. If you are just joining, now is your chance to say happy Halloween and all that jazz. So back to our coloring with my dark green. I think this is my grass green to further enhance my background uh, texture of, of these swirls. I am going around the actual lines with my green to give them just that green outline to make them pop a little bit more. And immediately you can see that it makes a huge difference. So back to that pressure thing you will do a lot better if you apply very little pressure and add layer upon layer upon layer. And that way you can add pretty much indefinite numbers of layers. Whereas if you grind the pigment in from the start, you may not be able to layer so well at all afterwards. You're just stuck with that color and you're, you're mushing the texture of the page and that's never a good thing in professional art. I know that some colorists out there like to mush the texture of the page and they think it's a cool effect. It's not a cool effect. It's it's really unprofessional and you shouldn't do it and just don't do it. So do your layers, don't mess with the tooth of the page and you will create much more professional art results. So, so far I'm doing pretty good with this green. I'm actually not hating on it as much as I thought I would. I mentioned this uh, possibly in my glow effects course. I remember talking about it to my, to a live audience. So it might, might've been a course that I was teaching live uh, that while I do hate green as a color, <laughs> and I hate working with it with colored pencils. I strangely enjoy working with green for two things, and that's crystals and uh, potions, any kind of a, a magical, unnatural glow, like a, uh, like a mad scientist lab with like a green glow in a single flask, that kind of stuff I love. So there, there is an exception to every rule. So in this case, the green just goes with my character, even though the Bride of Frankenstein doesn't have green skin, you know, just the word Frankenstein makes you think of green skin somehow, even though she technically doesn't have green skin, she has very, very pale white skin, but somehow just the whole universe of Frankenstein makes you think of a green glow. I don't know why I think we have movies to thank for that. And actually, speaking of green skin, I do teach a green skin tone 
on this page in my Undead Skin Tones course on Udemy. That's a very quick and easy course and it's up on Udemy. I don't control the prices on those. Udemy just sets whatever price they want. So <laughs> a lot of times if you keep checking in on Udemy, you'll catch a day when they're doing a crazy 80% discount or something like that. So you can grab that course for like $20. It's insane. Uh, so I'll drop a link to that in the video description as well. If you're interested in undead skin tones, I teach three of them on Udemy. Uh, one on this model with a green skin tone. Another one on the girl behind me, that model, uh, but a different skin tone where she is uh, like a Japanese water demon and she has red around her eyes and stuff like that, not like she is in the painting. And then the third one is a ghost bride. So, ah, oh, giveaway time, giveaway time. You must be in a live chat to participate in the giveaway. So if you're watching and you're not in the live chat, join now, join, join, join. I am starting the timer. All you have to do is type in the word boo, B-O-O -O, in the live chat. Make sure to use actual letters and not zeros for O's. Otherwise, Nightbot won't understand what's happening. So type, 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 type it away. You can, you can enter as many times as you want, but only one of your submissions will count. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, type in the word boo right now in the live chat. I'm sure it's going crazy off the screen right now. And the winner will get the 30% off coupon on any three items in my Etsy shop. Again, that's any three items. It's coloring pages, books, uh, 3D kits, shadow boxes, my original art. The highest valued item that I have in my shop is $2,000. The lowest valued item is a dollar. So <laughs> pick any three items that you want and get 30% off on them. And soon as Nightbot produces a winner for us, um, the winner, please contact me on Discord. And after the show, obviously not right now, but after the show, I will connect with you and you can tell me. Actually, you don't even have to tell me anything. Uh, we will connect and I will give you the coupon and you can go on the shopping spree. That's it. So 30 seconds left, everyone. Type in boo, 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 boo. And Nightbot, hopefully, if everything goes smoothly, <laughs> Nightbot will produce a winner for us. Remember that channel members, this is probably a really terrible time to mention this, but uh, my channel members actually have a higher chance of winning than non-channel members. So perhaps this is something I should talk about before the next giveaway hits in about 30 minutes. Ooh, the suspense. Congratulations. We have a winner. Yay. Everyone say congratulations to our winner. Once again, uh, please reach out to me in Discord. The link to my Discord server is in the video description. And uh, once you join, just send me a direct message and I will give you a coupon. Just make sure that you send me a private message so I don't share that coupon with the whole world. And once again, congrats. I hope you get something fun. Uh, I, I hope you don't waste it on just three coloring pages. <laughs> but it's entirely up to you. If three coloring pages is what you want, then, then go for it. But there's a lot to choose from. I have a huge Etsy shop and I thank you guys all so much for supporting my shop. It's doing great and it's only possible because of your guys' support and all of your feedback. My shop is still running strong with a full five star rating and a star seller rating because you guys always take the time to give me amazing feedback on the items that you purchase. So again, thank you so much for that. Congratulations again to the winner. We will run our second giveaway soon, soon, shortly um, in about half an hour to 45 minutes. And for that second giveaway, we will do the Black Widow set. Any one of the three that I showed in the beginning of the show, they are the original three Black Widow sets, the Black Widow, the Scorpion, and the Cobra. And the winner will get to choose one. Oh, and I meant to talk about the channel memberships. Right here on YouTube, 
where we all are. <laughs> there are, I mean, everyone is subscribed already, I'm sure, like 100%. Actually, you can't even chat if you're not subscribed. So everyone here in the live chat is already obviously subscribed to my channel. Thank you very much. If you are just tuning in and you're new here, hit that subscribe button, support the channel, and of course, join the live chat. But subscriptions are one thing. Separately from subscriptions, there are memberships. On the main page of my YouTube channel, you can click membership and become a member. There are three different tiers and every little bit helps. So thank you again, all of you who are already channel members and you know the channel members in the live chat as their names appear in green. Green is a theme today. So starting from, I think, tier two, the lucky ducky tier. Those of you who are in the lucky ducky tier or higher, you have a much higher chance of actually winning these giveaways. And that's not anything that I control. This is like some computer voodoo that Nightbot does. I told Nightbot, give these guys a higher chance of winning. And so he does. So it's not guaranteed, but I think you guys have a 50% higher chance of winning the giveaways. So that's another incentive to become a channel member. So do consider it. And thank you so much for supporting this channel. I couldn't do it without your guys' super chats and your thank yous. And of course, your memberships, because God knows we don't actually get paid for EdRev. <laughs> Not really, anyway. Get like $2 on a video. <laughs> Anywho, let's do some undead skin tone coloring. Did anyone notice what the name of this pencil was? I was talking very loudly and excitedly, so I completely missed it. When I color, I don't actually pay attention to color names and numbers. Like I showed you earlier in the show, all I do is I take a piece of scrap paper and I test the pencil that generally looks right to me. I teach all of that, how to select your colors and how to trust the visual aspect of a color rather than the name in my how to use colored pencils like a pro course. So those of you who have gone through that program already know it. Hey, 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 don't forget the trick or treat bag. <laughs> I'm not going to make a whole speech about it every single time, but some people might just be tuning in right now. So if you see the trick or treat bag, that's your cue to give me a little treat if you're feeling particularly nice and kind this Halloween season. I work hard and I love treats. So any kind of a treat in a form of a super chat or a thank you will be greatly appreciated and called out on the screen for everyone to see. So what was I talking about? Does anyone know what I was talking about? This is kind of tricky because I am a recording and I don't know what you guys are typing in the live chat. We're running the show a little bit different this time uh, because YouTube has been kind of unreliable during live streams. I didn't want to take a chance on my audio crapping out or YouTube freezing or the quality of the video dropping. So I decided to give this format a shot where I do a full recording of everything. And then I have my hands free to actually chat with you guys in the chat while the recording me can teach. And that way, when you tune in later, you also get a lot more lecture and technique and a lot less of me talking directly to the people. So if you guys like this format, if you're enjoying having me in the live chat and having me on the screen, if it's not too weird, uh, let me know. Let me know if you like it. Let me know right now in the live chat or if you're watching a recording, let me know in the comments below the video. Ah, we're talking about color selection and undead skin tones. Uh, so I missed it. I missed what color this is, <laughs> uh, but every single color pops up on the screen the second that I bring it up. Uh, in a big orange banner. So you can always skip back in the video and find out exactly what color I used. But notice that for my skin tone, I am not working with green. I don't want her to have a green skin tone, although she will have a green glow on her skin. So I'm working with like this pale dusty rose color, whatever the name of this pencil was. What it looks like to me on paper is a dusty rose. So those of you who have gone through Pencils Pro, is this a tint, a tone, or a shade? Let me know in the comments. And what I'm doing with this color is I'm starting to build her facial structure. She is a dead girl. So she has very highly defined cheekbones, probably very sunken cheekbones, 
and like a lot of death around the eyes. So that's what I'm adding right now with this color, but no green. Why no green? First, I already taught a green skin tone on this model in my Undead Skin Tones course on Udemy. And second, she already has a green background. Green skin on the back, green background will be a little bit difficult to read. We want to establish contrast. Contrast not only in value, but also in color. So if we had a deep dark green background and a light pale green face, that would certainly work, but it would still be a little bit dull because everything is green. And that's not just because I hate green, that's true for any other color. If it was blue and blue, it would still be a little dull. So if we had a, a strong blue background and having a pale blue face is just not always a good look. There's a place and a time for everything. And God knows I believe in breaking all the rules imaginable in art. So uh, I'm not ever going to say that anything in cast in stone, but I like to teach you these general ideas of what works and what works best. So uh, color combos is another thing that I teach in how to use colored pencils like a pro. And that whole section of the course will allow you to make these decisions on color, like which color skin tone will work with this background the best and why, because there is an actual science to it and not everything is done on a whim in art. Not everything is done just because I like it. There is an actual science to it. And that's the stuff that I teach in my academy. So for my skin tone here, I am going with, normally if she was a living person, I would go with more orangey skin tones, more like olive and orangey colors in her skin, but she is dead. So it's going to be a little bit grayish, uh, a little bit unhealthy, a little bit dead, but still with some color to it. So I'm starting with this dusty rose just to get a feel for it. And I'm working with this, Prismacolor Dusty Rose Pencil over all the white charcoal work that I've already done. And because I used the Q-tip blending on the white charcoal step, this layer is very smooth and it feels exactly as if I'm coloring over just pure naked paper. So that's another reason why I like white charcoal so much. It's because it's just gentle and powdery and it doesn't me mess with the texture of the paper and it doesn't give it that waxy layer. If I did that first primer layer in Prismacolor White, like Prisma colors of wax pencils, it would still have a slightly waxy layer that we would have to contend with, that we would have to compete with, with every single color afterwards. And sometimes that's okay if you know the final outcome is going to be quite pale, but if we're going to be adding a lot of pigment and we want some areas to be really dark, for instance, I want her eyes to be really dark. I want her lips to be very dark and the eyebrows and the stitch work on all the scars on her face. Like there are going to be some areas that are nearly black or black and building all of that up over actual white Prisma color pigment. It's impossible. You'll never get that pure black saturation. Dark Umber. Dark Umber is another Prismacolor pencils, pencil that I use a lot, as you can tell from, from its length. <laughs> and it's a brown that I find very attractive. It's so dark, it's nearly black. In the Black Widow sets, there are a lot of beautiful brown pencils that are a match to this or a very close match to this. So if you are a Black Widow person, then you definitely have more than enough browns to choose from. Black Widow is very generous on, uh, on the brown front. But working with any brand of pencils, you probably have a really dark brown. If your brown isn't nearly as dark as what you're seeing on the screen right now, you don't have any alternative to this color, then I would do this step in two steps. That didn't make any sense. And then I would do this step in two stages. That's better, right? Speak is hard, especially in the morning. This is really early in the morning when I'm recording this. <laughs> So if your brown isn't as dark as what you're seeing on the screen, then do the best you can with the brown that you have, the darkest brown possible, and then add a little bit of black shading over it. And that will bring up the shade of your brown to the value that we're looking for in this particular stage. So a little technical here, but, uh, but again, if you've gone through any of my courses, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So very, very smooth shading with every single layer, the shading becomes smoother and it becomes easier. 
So it seems very scary to add these really dark shades to our super pale skin tone, but because we have those layers and we're not working directly on paper, the layers of pigment are building up and building up. Every next one is just so smooth. It kind of naturally happens. You don't even have to work so hard. And again, no little to no pressure, very, very little pressure on every single one of these layers. A lot of the questions that I get on shading and gradient transitions is, um, how do I decide if I start with the dark color or the light color is the correct way to go from light to dark or from dark, dark to light? And the answer is you can go both ways. For some people, it's more intuitive to add the darker pigments first and then add the lighter pigments. And for some people, it's the other way around. For me, I usually go light to dark and then back again. There's a lot of balancing for me, but I start with the light pigment. As you noticed, I do my primer with the white charcoal. Then I establish the very basic uh, skin tones and the skin tone structure, the face structure with, uh, um, with the cheekbones and everything. And then I come in with more definition with a darker color. And if more blending is needed after that, then I'll bring back some lighter colors to kind of smooth things out and blend it out. So that's generally my approach, especially on skin tones, but there is no one perfect right way to do it. Some gradient transitions work better from darker color to lighter color, also depending on the tools that you're working with. Some tools just blend better dark to light than the other way around. And this is talking only about colored pencils at this point, if we're dealing with other pigments of like a graphite or charcoal, then obviously we always go from darker to lighter because we're just working with the lightness of the paper and the darkness of the pigment. So it also greatly depends on the tools that you're working with. And as far as shading technique itself, uh, there are a lot of variations there. Are also things that I teach in depth in both how to use colored pencils like a pro and the fundamentals of drawing. I teach a lot of shading technique, specifically how to hold your pencil, which way the strokes should go. Oh, trick or treat, trick or treat. I almost missed that one. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being so generous with your donations. I'm sure that my trick or treat bag is already full of them, but I am happy to take more treats from any of you who are just joining the channel. So remember to throw me a super chat or hit that thank you button if you're watching this as a recording. So shading techniques, there are many and I teach four main ones in, um, where do I actually teach that? Do I teach that in fundamentals of drawing or pencil pro? Those of you who are my students, let me know. I think I teach it in both uh, for different reasons. Yes. Yes. Now I remember I teach it in both how to do different shading techniques and uh, especially with uh, colored pencils, like a lot of people like a tiny circles. A lot of people like big strokes. A lot of people like the kind of free for all doodle style and none of them are wrong. But for a single piece, I actually like to switch them up. It depends on the area that you're working on, how big it is, how detailed it is, and the actual texture that you want to achieve in the end. So my shading technique varies quite a bit within a single composition. As you can see right now, I am working very delicately with tiny little circles, tiny little strokes, and changing the direction of my hand just ever so slightly to go around that bone structure on her face. And the reason I'm so delicate in this particular step, like you saw with the green, it was just like all over the place. It was like painting a, a woodshed or something, <laughs> you know, just like add that green. If this was a brush, it would, it would be the same kind of hand movement. But now on the face with this brown detail for the structure of the face and everything, I am very delicate. I'm a lot slower. All of this that you're seeing on the screen is in real time. None of it was sped up. Uh, I skipped through some steps of it uh, to, to make everything fit into exactly two hours, uh, but I'm not speeding through any of that. Someone specifically asked me if I could show shading in real time, not sped up. So I hope, I think that was rainbow rainbow. I hope you're watching. This is for you. This is in real time. This is what my shading technique looks like. And this is very slow, very delicate for me. Earlier in the show, I talked about the speed of coloring and making art and that it's completely irrelevant. Some effects, some specific effects, especially in drawing, and this is something I cover in Fundamentals of Drawing in my academy, 
and that um, some effects just work better if your stroke is faster. Um, but for coloring, there isn't really. You can take three hours doing this step. You can take 16 hours doing this step. It doesn't matter as long as the result matches what you want. If you can come up with this smooth gradient transition, but it takes you a week, who cares? It's not like we're in a race, you know, as long as you're having fun and the result comes out to please you, you're doing great. So I'm being super delicate with the shading. Also, it's a huge leap from our very pale skin tone with the white and that dusty rose to this darkest imaginable brown. Usually with skin tones, as those of you who have gone through my skin tone mastery course know, we apply our new layers very gently and they don't really jump around that much with some exceptions, of course, but generally we don't jump around this dramatically from a very pale pigment to the darkest pigment imaginable. There's usually a buildup. And that's to build up the layers, to build up the confidence, to leave less room for error, more room for error, to leave more room for error, <laughs> just to give you, to give you some cushion in case you add too much pigment or not enough pigment that you can keep building it up. You can keep making adjustments. This is a little severe going from nearly white to nearly black in just one step. And that's the reason I'm taking this step so lightly, so gently is because I do want that high contrast. And that's simply because she's dead, undead, whatever. You know, I want that drama. I want, I want the circles around the eyes. I want the sunken cheekbones. I want it to be as unnatural and spooky as possible. And that's why such a dramatic leap. Normally in skin tone coloring, we wouldn't do this. We would go a lot gentler. Uh, and now you can see I'm starting to speed up. Like even me, like I have decades of experience. And even with my experience and my expertise, you can see that sometimes I'm struck with insecurity or sometimes I need to slow down a bit and be like, does this even work or, or should I, should I redo this whole thing? It's perfectly natural. You guys, it's perfectly normal. A lot of you re uh, reach out to me saying, oh, I did this and you show me a picture and you're like, but I'm not so sure if it worked. And, 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 you know, many students talk about how they, they just never like the work that they produce. And that's, you guys, that's so normal. That's so natural. We are all victims to it. I suffer from this all the time. I make this art. And the second that I complete a piece, I usually hate it. <laughs> the second that I complete any artwork, I am struck with an immediate desire to crumple it up and throw it in the trash. And sometimes I do. So I've learned over the years that what I need to do is the second that I finish an art piece is just turn off all the lights in my studio and leave the room, like physically leave, go for a bike ride, go play a video game, go cook something, play with the dogs, you know, do anything at all and don't even enter my room until the next day. And what do you know, the next day I come into my studio and I'm like, wow, I did great. That looks amazing. Now I can share it with my audience. I kid you not, every single time. So don't be too hard on yourselves. I see all of your chatter in Discord. I see all of your chatter in the community. And uh, many of you are getting much better with, uh, you know, really appreciating your own work and really seeing your strength. And that's amazing. I applaud all of you for finally allowing yourself to feel good about your work. But for those of you who are still new to this field of art, this field of coloring, and you do get struck with insecurities and you just don't like ever don't like anything that you produce, you always think that it can be better. That's just the artist's curse, you guys. We are always cursed with being too hard on ourselves, no matter what we do. And that's why it's so important to share our work with other people. When others react to your work, I guarantee you that everyone's reactions are 100% genuine. When people don't have anything nice to say, they just don't say it at all. So if somebody took the time to respond to your post and to give you compliments, to give you feedback, really listen to it. They mean it. I mean it. I try to comment on as much work as I can, as much as I see uh, our Discord channel, which the link is in the video description. Join it. Join it. We have different rooms there. We have rooms for show your work, introductions, just an open chat where you can chat about anything at all. 
uh, you can send me a direct message there. If you want me to personally look at something that you're working on, I'll be happy to give you feedback. But I think a much stronger move is to get feedback from the community. It's been so helpful. And I'm sure the chat is going crazy right now with people saying how wonderful it is to actually get feedback from each other. And I, I, I'm convinced of it because <laughs> I know it. I have been running my community for several years now. I just now kicked off a Discord channel, so that's pretty new, but it just blew up with conversations. It was amazing. So do join Discord and join the conversation, and you will see that together when we share our work and we get the feedback, we grow so much faster, you know, and it's true for me as well. I share my work with you guys and your feedback and your support gives me the confidence to keep producing work and to keep teaching you. So it's the same thing for all of us creative people. All right, enough of a pep talk. I'm sure you all feel a lot better about your work now. Let's get back to actual art. So this layer of my brown shading looks like it's coming to an end. This was a very long step, adding all of these shadows. You know who is going to shine in this? I bet Segoline is going to shine in this. We have a colorist named Segoline. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. I am really sorry if I'm butchering your name every single time that I mention you. I, I try my best. Our very amazing and talented colorist, Segoline, does crazy detailed textures on faces. She adds these textures to everything, but especially on faces, I think, like, I, I know a lot of you guys. I know a lot of you by name. I know a lot of your coloring styles. And this particular colorist, when she does this page and she shares it on Discord or in the community, you will see that, that her bone structure is going to be even more defined than mine. And for characters like these, the undead characters, that is the best way to go. And so many of you will be on the timid side. And that's not saying anything negative about your work. It's just human nature. A lot of us start out being a little bit timid, especially with skin tones. And that's why I teach an entire course on skin tones. But with this type of a fantasy dramatic character, take it a notch higher. Take it a step further than you are comfortable with. And again, this colorist, Segoline, will have no issues with it. She'll take it even further than I did. But a lot of you may be too timid with adding these crazy bone structure. Press on. Press on and you can't ruin it. If you feel like you ruined it, just start all over. This is a PDF download. You can print as many copies of this as you want and try again and again and again until you get to the result that you want. And of course, like I mentioned, run it past the community and get some feedback. This that's happening on the screen right now, even though I missed the name of the pencil, I know exactly what I'm working with because that is my favorite blender pencil. That is a 20% French gray and it's PC 1069. It's the only pencil whose name and number I actually know because it's my number one favorite pencil for blending effects. Ah, trick or treat. Don't forget to give me a little treat. And uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This 20% gray is something that I highly recommend that you guys get as a standalone pencil if you don't have the full Prisma color set. Some pencils you can get as standalone pencils on Amazon. I don't think it's every single color imaginable. I think it's just a few. I know that you can get white and black and 20% French gray. Uh, because I have literally bouquets of these pencils on my desk that I get as standalones. Uh, when I got my full Prisma color set, these were the first ones that I just went through from a full length, length pencil to something so small I couldn't even put it through a pencil sharpener anymore. So I knew I was in trouble. Fortunately, on Amazon, you can get them as standalones. So this is one of those pencils that I recommend that you get, even if you don't have the full set. And in fact, even if you don't work with Prismacolor at all. These pencils, Prismacolor Black, Prismacolor White, and the 20% French Gray are the three pencils that will work with any brand out there in any order imaginable. Best Black, Best, best White, and Best Blender. So, you know, Prismacolor should just sponsor me. I do praise them quite a bit. And look what's happening here on the screen. Magical, magical things are happening. I spend a lot of time on that brown layer. 
over my dusty pink layer, dusty rose layer. And I was very careful to keep my shading tidy and very small strokes, very gentle shading. Notice how different the shading technique is right now. Once again, everything is in real time on this show. I'm not speeding anything up, but notice how much faster my hand is moving right now, how much more confident. It's because with this blender pencil, I don't need to worry about detail anymore. It's like an airbrushing effect. Like I'm taking a brush and I'm just smoothing out makeup on her face. And even though my shading was so tidy, it's even smoother and tidier now with this blender pencil. So I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope those pencils are going because this is really good information for anyone who's interested in creating these amazing effects. Now, this red was a bit of an adventure. I picked a red that I thought would look cool. I took a note of its number and I tried applying it to the scars, but I immediately didn't like it. I, I scratched it out right away. Why is that? It looked too tomato red to me, not the look I was going for. So I grabbed another pencil. This is pomegranate red, and it's more on the fuchsia side, which just works with my character better. And that's literally how it goes. I like keeping parts like that in the recording for you guys so that you see the natural process, that not everything is 100% smooth, not everything works right away. Sometimes I try an effect and it just doesn't work. Like that red looked really good on paper, but I added it to the scars and it was just like, oh, cringe, totally wrong, totally not the look I'm going for. So I tried the next red and this looks good. Again, I want everything on a very cool side on her face. No really warm colors at all. This uh, pomegranate, this nearly fuchsia burgundy color is just perfect because it, it has that touch of cool to it, even though it's a red color. It's a little bit on the cool side, a very, very strong color, just perfect. So, all righty, let's see what's going. How are we doing time-wise? We are almost up for another giveaway. In a few minutes, we will run another giveaway. So if you're still here, if you're still watching, invite your friends, make a post on Facebook or whatever community you belong to, invite more people to join so that we can run this giveaway. You do have to be in the live chat to participate because you'll have to fill in uh, a word to enter the giveaway. So you do have to join the live chat and to join the live chat, you have to be subscribed to the channel. It takes 60 seconds for the computers and the machines to approve you. So make sure not to try to join in the last minute. Join now, subscribe to the channel, and that way you can join the live chat and then you can join the giveaway. Our next giveaway will be, here they are, crinkle, 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 very loud. So yeah, I can't talk and show those boxes at the same time. They're super crinkly. One of these three original boxes of Black Widow, the Widow, the Scorpion, and the Cobra will be, or the Cobra will be our next giveaway to one lucky winner. And the winner will get to tell me which one they want, which one of the three they prefer. I'm not going to open them up because the value of this prize is that it's untouched and wrapped in plastic. But you don't have to decide immediately um, if you win. You can just go online and check out the colors, the color selection. All of these boxes are on Amazon. So I'm going to drop a link to each one of the sets in the video description. You guys will be excited to see that when you go to the links on Amazon, that my art is up there demonstrating the beautiful pigments of Black Widow pencil. So I'm very honored to be on their poster art. Thank you so much, Albert. Albert Jones, the creator of Black Widow Pencils. Big shout out to him. So go online, check out what's inside each set and then decide which one you want to get. These three are very similar sets. They're the original three and they have all the basic colors. If you are interested in doing this piece in Black Widow Pencils, there is a perfect set for that. And that is the Monarch set. The Monarch set is very heavy on green. I did a review of the Monarch set. I'm going to put a link to where there, somewhere there. 
<laughs> on the top right corner there's gonna be a button that will pop up eventually eventually after this video gets processed and chewed on by the youtube robots there will be a link somewhere up on the screen to the video where i did a full review of the black widow monarch when it just came out and of course i complain a lot about how much green there is in that set because that's just me if you ignore that and then look at the artwork that you can produce with it and if you do actually like green and if you want to do something like this then the black widow monarch set is the perfect one for this project Alrighty, we did a whole bunch of work with this burgundy. I think it looks amazing. I added it to the scars, I added it to the lips, and I added it around the eyes. And now I'm bringing back my chartreuse. This stage is a little scary because the, the face looks nice and balanced and properly undead. And now I'm coming in with this lime green, this very light lime green, this beautiful chartreuse color. Well, beautiful. As much as green can be beautiful, you know. <laughs> now I'm coming in with this chartreuse color to all the areas that I left the lightest. Notice that I'm coloring in the white parts on the lips. Notice that I colored in the teeth. I'm coloring everything that's her skin tone that's closer to the edges of the face with the chartreuse color. And that's my magical green unnatural fantasy glow. But notice also what's happening here on the screen with the shading. I am very, very open, very liberal here with the shading uh, over the brown and the red that I've already established. So there's a lot of this color overlap. And as the green, as the chartreuse overlaps our brown and burgundy colors on the face, another beautiful color is born. A lot of these amazing color transitions create entirely new pigments. So if you're interested in learning stuff like that, again, consider joining how to use colored pencils like a pro so that you know which colors work with other colors and how color combos work into all of this. And in the meantime, if you're just enjoying this color along, then I recommend that you follow my steps exactly. And even if you don't have the exact pencils, which every pencil name pops up on the screen every time that I bring it out, so you can flip through the video, skip through the video, and get all of those pencil names for every single step. But even if you don't have the exact pencils, all of these effects can be achieved with any brand pencil, as long as you follow my general principle. And the general principle is I, I try to describe the general principle as it's happening. So not just any green, obviously a hunter green wouldn't work for this glow effect on the face. It has to be a very light green. It has to be lighter than all the shadow work that we did on the bone structure. If it's the same darkness or even darker, then it's not gonna be a glow effect. It's just gonna look like green paint on her face and we don't want that. So a lot of these effects are only physically possible because of high contrast. That's also something that I teach quite a bit in all of my courses. But for the purposes of this color along, ah, look, it's happening again on this area right here where the scar comes out from under her hair and around the ear, where I did an overlap with the, with the chartreuse over the dark brown parts that new color that's born i can't even put my name i can't even put my name on it i'm done talking i can't even put my finger on it what this color is i can't even describe it but that transition color between the burgundy and the chartreuse is absolutely amazing so again you guys layer 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 and gradient transition gradient transition gradient transition that in a nutshell is the secret to successful beautiful and professional coloring of course that's in a nutshell if you want to truly master the art of coloring swing by the academy and pick a course that's right for you i was reminded to say this more often on the show every single course that's up in the academy comes with a payment plan option so when you go and select the course that you're interested in when you click on the price button you will get a drop down menu and it will tell you you can pay for this course up front, you can pay for it over three months, or you can pay for it over six months with no time restriction. You can just take the whole course in a week or two, but still have the six months to pay for it. Or you can pay for it up front and take two years to complete it. Entirely up to you. Everyone works differently, everyone prefers different payment plans. And I'm super excited that I'm finally, ah, 
hold all those thoughts. We have another giveaway. I hope everyone's in the live chat. I hope there are a ton of you watching the show right now. Our second giveaway starts now. So we have a new word. Type in the word spider in the live chat. This is, this is a pretty good spider, right? I don't know. It's like a weird spider butterfly, actually. <laughs> spider. <laughs> Type in the word spider to enter the giveaway. Remember that the price for this one is a box of Black Widow pencils of your choice. Choice from the three that I showed you earlier, and that's the Black Widow, the Scorpion, or the Cobra. That's the, the original from the very first release. They've changed since then, actually. So that's the very... Very collectible original, still in its box and still in its wrapper. I've had these boxes for a few years. I've been saving them for a special occasion and this occasion is as special as they get. So I hope the word spider is just rolling off the screen like crazy and lots and lots and lots of spiders. Everyone's participating. If you don't know what's going on and you just tuned in, you have to be in the live chat to participate in this giveaway. So hop on in, type in the word spider. And if you are a channel member of the tier Lucky Ducky or higher, you have much higher chances of winning these giveaways than anyone else on the show. So sorry about that for everyone else on the show. And congrats to everyone who is my member. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. And I will slurp my coffee for the last 30 seconds of this countdown. Oh, coffee's gone. Why is the coffee always gone? Alrighty, almost done. 17 seconds, 16, 15, 14. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Is two minutes enough? Is two minutes too long? Let me know after you're done typing in spider. I think it's just right. I think it's just right. We certainly don't want to hang out here for six minutes watching people type in the same word over and over again. And we have a winner. Congratulations, whoever you are. <laughs> Congratulations to our winner. Please get in touch with me via Discord. I am going to drop a link. Well, I already dropped a link in the video description to the Discord channel. Please pop in the channel, join it. It's it's easy to draw a Discord channel and send me a direct message there saying which one of the three boxes you would like. And also giving me your shipping address so that I can physically go and ship it out to you. I hope you enjoy this box of pencils. They have been life-changing for me. My whole journey with Black Widow pencils has just been unbelievable. I've made some of my best art, some of my memorable art with Black Widow pencils. I've taught multiple courses using nothing but Black Widow pencils. They are amazing, especially for this kind of blending and layering that I teach. Fantastic. Now, Black Widow pencils are interesting in the way that the sets are organized. A single set, so I may have just gotten you hooked onto something that you didn't want to get hooked on. <laughs> First one's free, you know, but once you get this Black Widow set and you get a feel for how they, they apply to paper and all the cool effects you'll do with them, you'll realize that a single box of Black Widows is just not enough. You do need to get a bunch of them. Oh, hey, 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 trick or treat. Remember to drop a coin for your teacher. If you are watching this live, hit me up with a super chat. If you're watching this as a recording, hit that thank you button and drop me a treat. That is my official trick-or-treating bag that I am hanging out with here on this show today. And all of you who have been supporting this channel and have been dropping me super chats and gifts and treats all throughout the show, thank you so much, you guys. I just can't thank you enough. Every little bit helps. And this Halloween, I am feeling very special with all of the little treats that I'm getting from you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, what is happening on the screen right now? We are adding gray. I once again missed the title of this pencil, but I'm pretty sure that it's a 50% warm gray that I'm adding here. And this is kind of optional at this stage. We did a really great job building up all the bone structure and everything on her face. And the chartreuse glow, creating that beautiful new color that we can't even describe. But I felt like more contrast is needed. The darker those areas of her face that are already dark, the lighter the chartreuse will look. Contrast is key in art, in any kind of art. Our brains perceive contrast a lot stronger than they perceive 
color. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. So regardless of the colors that you choose, it's the contrast that makes something a more noticeable work of art, a more relatable work of art, because our brains really care about the contrast a lot more than about color. And that is why I'm bringing in this really dark gray right now to build up that contrast. Also remember, this is a dramatic and fantasy piece. You can't go too strong on the contrast. Even if you bring in a black here and do even more work on the face with darker shadows, with actual black, that's perfectly fine. Other colors that you can bring in at this stage are um, different kinds of grays, dark grays, both cool or warm, actually. That's another thing that I talk a lot about in my courses. My uh, How to Use Colored Pencils Like a Pro course has an entire section on grayscale because of that contrast factor. So I actually teach all about the different kinds of grays and how to apply them to create tints, tones, and shades and how to calibrate your grayscale with warm and cool colors. So either warm or cool gray will work for this particular face. And we're doing this for sculpting, for that higher, stronger bone structure on the face, for that higher drama effect. And I think that looks amazing. You know, my, my whole hatred of green aside, I think that just looks so amazing. And right now I'm feeling very comfortable adding this gray. This is more like I'm more in my element right now. I tend to work with grayscale. Oh, 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 oh. And speaking of grayscale behind me is my latest drawing of Wednesday Adams. So that's something that I'll be teaching separately. The full recording of that drawing of Wednesday Adams, which I did in ballpoint pen and marker is something that I'm sharing with my patrons of the Doodle Club tier. I have two special tiers on Patreon. I have lots of tiers on Patreon, but I have two very special tiers on Patreon. That's the Doodle Club and the Coloring Club. And each one of those clubs tiers on Patreon get a monthly full uninterrupted recording of my latest creation. So the Doodle Club is more around drawing and the Coloring Club is, as the name suggests, more around coloring. So in the Coloring Club, you will get videos like my full four or six hour coloring of, let's say, the hyper-realistic Barbie that I did with every single color announced and just uninterrupted, unsped up every single thing that I do, you can see. And it's been producing absolutely amazing results. My Since I switched to like the full recording, if it's four hours, you get four hours. If it's eight hours, you get eight hours. Um, since I switched to that format, just sharing the entire process with you guys and have a full month to chew on it, the results that the students have been submitting Oh my God, dude, I can't even make this stuff up. Some of the submissions that come in, I can't tell the difference between my own work and my students' work. And when that happens, you know you've succeeded as a teacher. So this month in the Doodle Club, that lesson is already up. You can join a Patreon tier at any time whatsoever. It doesn't have to be the first of the month. You can join on the very last of the month and still get that month's video. So join 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 this month i am teaching this wednesday adam drawing wednesday adams drawing with pen and ink which is surprisingly easier than people realize and since this is october october is also inktober and lots of you are interested in drawing with pen and ink so it's a perfect time to join the doodle club and grab that lesson ah a skin tone an actual skin tone <laughs> Now I'm bringing in this light peach and I'm going to use this light peach mostly as a blender, but also to highlight that interesting color that we've created with a combination of our burgundy brown and chartreuse. Again, this is one of those details that is so subtle, it's barely noticeable, especially on camera, but it makes a difference. It's a little bit of a natural skin blushy tone, but it's so gentle. If you just look at the skin tone the way that it is on the screen right now, you probably won't be able to call out every single color that I used. Some of them are obvious. Clearly there's a gray here. Clearly there's a chartreuse. But actually, if I were to guess without having seen the process, well, without having gone through the process, <laughs> if I was a complete stranger and I just looked at the skin tone right now, I would have actually guessed purple and chartreuse 
purple is the closest that I can come up with for the beautiful, mysterious color that we've created here. So I would guess purple and chartreuse with a little bit of red on the stitches and the lips. But I would never guess three kind, two kinds of gray, a brown, a uh, dusty rose and a pale peach. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess that, but they are in there. They're in there. And even myself, like if I look at this work two years from now, I'm not going to be able to guess all these colors. So fortunately I'm recording all of this. So back to the uninterrupted lessons. Um, Patreon link is in the video description. Join the fun, come become a patron and get those uninterrupted raw footage videos that you can follow along with and see my uninterrupted process on things like that Wednesday Adams. Now I will be showing a shorter teaser flick of Wednesday on YouTube just as a free video, but it's not actually going to uh, be the whole teaching process. All right, coming in with black now. Again, we need to up that contrast and the darkest parts on her face will be her eyebrows, her eyelashes and her pupils and probably her nostrils. So a little bit of black. I leave black for last or nearly last. And that is because I want to build up all of my colors and then build up my black as a shade of a certain color. And that way it looks more natural. It looks more dynamic. So adding black now, everything just pops. And again, look at what's happening on the screen. Look at how adding this black to her eyes makes the green glow around her face glow that much more. Contrast over color. Even if that green glow was yellow, even if it was white, it would still just pop because of contrast. So it doesn't really matter what the colors are. What matters is applying the right amount of shadow and adding the right amount of light. And that incidentally is actually why I like to combine both drawing and coloring in my academy. And then I like to introduce you guys to both effects because they go hand in hand. Like I think that coloring is just another form of drawing. You're just skipping the sketching stage and going straight to adding shadows and dimensions. Hey, trick or treat cat is back. I, we are like an hour and a half into the show. So I'm sure I am filthy rich by now with all of your super chats and your thank yous. And I thank you kindly for dropping all of those coins for your teacher. Thank you guys so much for your support, for your love, and for all of your donations. They are a huge help to me and happy Halloween to all of you guys. And we still have one more giveaway to do, which may or may not happen, depending on how many of you are in the live chat. If there's a lot of you at the end of the show and I have a particular number in mind, and if that number is hit, then we will do one final giveaway and that will be free access to any one of my art courses in It's Easy to Draw Academy. However, those are very valuable courses. They go up as high as $200 per course. So I'm not really comfortable giving that away if there are only five people watching my show. I hope you guys understand. So if it's completely dead at the end of the show, then we'll just do it next time when more people join. But if it's still all crazy and and lots of people in the live chat and lots of people talking and celebrating and saying happy Halloween and talking about art and whatnot, and it's really busy and just an awesome place to be, then we'll end the show with a bang. We'll do that one final giveaway with my biggest prize yet. Free admission, not, like not even a discount, just free admission to any course that you want. Then we'll do that. But remember that uh, I certainly don't want it to come across as a punishment or anything for not, for not having enough people in the show. I know that a lot of you don't really uh, get the announcements or, or you may have other things happening so you couldn't make it to the live show and that's perfectly fine. There will be part two to the show and that will happen in about two weeks. So you have plenty of time to prepare. So we'll give it another shot. If not enough people are here right now, hopefully we'll get a lot more people for part part two. Now that you've had time to catch up, now that you're watching this as a rerun and you see how much fun it is, how much you're learning and how cool the giveaways are and how valuable the giveaways are. So for part two, we will run all the same giveaways. We'll do one more Black Widow giveaway because we still have boxes. We'll do one more gift card giveaway and we'll do the free access to the course. Ah, some more news on courses. Actually, hold that thought. 
we'll get back to courses right now something extremely different and important is happening on the screen i am adding a black brush marker now i have behind me right there a set of copic markers that just live on my desk i love my copic markers but full disclosure they are a little bit pricey I spoiled myself to these Copic markers on my birthday last year. That was my gift to myself. Uh, actually, I think that was Tech's gift to me. <laughs> but they are not cheap. These are $300 markers. And my first thought was, why would anyone ever pay that for, for a box of markers when you can get others that are comparable, that are also brush markers and beautiful markers, like um, a hoo hoo markers are perfectly wonderful. And they're like $30. So the difference in price is quite huge. However, since I got my Copics, my hoo hoo markers just went into the closet and they're collecting dust. It does make a difference. Copics are an addiction. <laughs> they are so smooth they're so wonderful they seem to last forever i've had these over a year and i use them all the time they're super friendly on this cardstock paper this is 65 pound cardstock and both a 65 pound cardstock and 80 pound strathmore i use the these copic markers with you can see the bleed on the back of the page a little bit but it doesn't matter because it doesn't warp the texture of the page and so who cares about the back of the page anyway as long as the page stays straight and flat and no texture is burnt or brandished in any way on the front then i consider it a success these are very strong markers but the reason that i love them is they have two ends you have one highlighter end which i never use and the other end is the brush marker which i use all the time and the set that i have link in the video description has colors that are so light that are nearly transparent and i use those almost as watercolor and with the brushy effect it's just amazing so back to that announcement that i was about to make there is a course that i am offering now that's a mini course that's very fast and very affordable and that is my new halloween gothic coloring course and i think i'm pretty sure that in that course i bring in my copic markers certainly in the wednesday adams coloring a drawing i bring in my copic markers in some of my courses as well um skin tone mastery I do the backgrounds with the Copic markers, with the brush markers, just to show that you can do these effects much faster with brush markers, but you have to have the ones that are really light. And that's another reason why I love Copics over any other brand out there is because of those super light colors that I'm able to add like proper gradient transitions and like watercolor brushy effects directly on my paper with just markers. It's insane. But this marker that I'm using right now is very straightforward. This is just black and I'm using it to fill in everything that's her hair. I like to bring in markers for a slight style change so that all the detail is on the face of the character. That's how I did Wednesday Adams. I did um, her face in ballpoint pen and white charcoal so that it's highly detailed. It looks like a very, very detailed high resolution photograph. And then I did the rest of it with the hair and the dress and the background and the frame in different kinds of markers. And that makes the face that much more realistic. That little bit of a style change is a really good idea. So here we know that the character has, this is an iconic character. So we know that she has jet black hair and a single white stripe in her hair. So that's all that we want. A lot of times it's easy to overwork details like the hair. And certainly in the actual coloring, I drew in, as, as the artist of this page, I drew in every single strand of hair to give you that texture to play with. So if you want, you can color it strand by strand. But me, I'm actually just going to brush over the whole thing with my black brush marker. But what's going to happen in real life, I know on the screen it's a little bit difficult to see because uh, there's just one angle, but in real life you can move your face around the page or move your page around your face. And you can see all the lines, all the actual lines that are printed on the page, you can still see them through the marker and that's a really cool effect. So what that allows us to do is to actually go over those lines with a different pencil later on, should we wish to do so. Now, working with brush markers, specifically Copic markers, 
over wax pencils sometimes creates a very shiny effect and that's what happened on the eyes with me the the darkness of the pen of the marker is very nice i definitely wanted to reflect the darkness of her hair in the darkness of her eyes but it created this kind of undesirable sheen of this too much glitter on the eyes that i didn't like so i went over that area that was too shiny I went over it again with a pencil and that dulled it down. So always, always try that. Always try going back and forth, especially if you're mixing media. I am a huge fan of mixed media, but sometimes things backfire. <laughs> you know, the only way that you learn is you try certain effects and you're like, Ugh, that totally didn't work. Fortunately, I am here to make all of these mistakes for you so that I can spare you the heartbreak <laughs> of ruining a beautiful art piece while you're trying something out. So if, if you have any questions at all, any technical questions about anything that works, specifically which order it works in, please don't hesitate to ask me either right now live on the show in the live chat or at any point at all in uh, in my Discord channel or in our community. Of course, links to everything that you guys need that you can just click and go straight to are in the video description. Oh, yes, that's right. I forgot my coffee is actually gone. <laughs> the other really cool thing about working with a marker is, of course, that it saves you time. It's so much faster to fill in this black hair with just a brush marker and not have to do all the gentle shading all the layering because remember what i talked about layering and pressure if we were to color all of this hair in black first of all we wouldn't actually start with a black pencil if we really wanted to be professional we would start with something like a dark brown or a dark burgundy or a dark blue or a combination of all three so layer after layer after layer using very little pressure so we don't destroy the tooth of the page so that we don't mush the tooth of the page once we have all those layers only then we would come in with a layer of black always following the direction of the hair strands and once we have the first layer of black we would go over it again and again and again so it, it could very easily be an hour or a two hour process to color this hair in solid black with pencils and that seems crazy right it's just a single pigment filling everything in. But if you're working with color pencils and you want professional results, if you want it to look like actual professional art and you want to match all the details, the, the attention to details on the entire composition to match all the work that we did on her face, we would have to do the same amount of work on the hair, even though ultimately the look is very simple. So sometimes there's there's a time and a place for that. Some, some projects need uh, the, the investment of time to really do all of those layers on the hair, uh, but she just has so much of it. <laughs> You know, her hair is bigger than her. So I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't put you guys through it. I just decided, you know what? This is drama. This is Halloween. We can go straight to jet black and fill it all in. But notice that even though I'm working with a marker, I'm still following the strands of the hair as much as possible because those brush strokes, you will see them. You will see them a little bit. Nothing is ever 100% smooth. Nothing, no pigment that you use is going to look like it's printed. So a little bit of those brush strokes and their direction will always show through. So if you've gone this far, if you've gotten this far and you have all those beautiful gradient transitions on her face and everything's already established, the glow effect is there, don't ruin it by by just you know markering in her hair like like a toddler <laughs> take the time take the care to actually follow the strands and even though we're doing it very quickly with this brush marker still take the care to add all of the different effects when you watch those of you who are in the doodle club tier on patreon when you watch the the wednesday adams video you will see that with different markers and with different pens, I go over them multiple times um, to bring down some of them that are too shiny and bring up some of them that are just not saturated enough because there are many shades of black, believe it or not. And especially if you're mixing tools, different pens, different markers, the effect on the paper is quite dramatic. So bringing in other tools to dull certain effects down is a good idea. Actually, now that we have the whole background of our hair the, the whole mass of her hair already done in black marker 
if it looked too stark to you, if the marker texture is too obviously different from everything else that we've done, now you can go over it with a black pencil and now it will be fast because the underpainting is already done with the marker. So now bringing in the black over it would be a good move. In my case, I don't think it's necessary. I think with this particular marker on this particular paper, it's not shiny at all. My marker over the wax pencils was shiny. So I cleaned up those areas by adding pencil pigment over it so that I don't have that, that very stark transition from matte to shiny. So I cleaned all of those up like I did on the eyes and also where the hair met the, the color of her skin tone. And notice that I'm always going back and forth. I mentioned this before on the show, always, always back and forth. If something looks a little bit off, if something looks like it needs to be a little bit darker, there's you don't have to do everything in sequential steps and that's it it's locked in forever you can always come back and edit certain effects later and it all comes back full circle to contrast i've added the black of the hair and that created the highest contrast imaginable on the page black and white is the highest contrast that exists on the planet <laughs> to to us it's for all human eyes anyway so once we created th this highest contrast imaginable, then we can see that some areas of the face can be done even more dramatically. You know, without that black and white hair, the face looked very dramatic. But now that we added the black and white hair, all of a sudden the face looks almost smooth and gentle, like practically natural <laughs> if you disregard the green poison glow. But you see how the whole vision of the piece changes as you add different effects. And that's why it's so important to just be open minded and keep coming back to certain areas like now i'm just free handing some really cool scar and tooth effects to her face I just because it feels right i'm not working from a reference image i am working entirely from my imagination on this and i am just free handing these these effects to make her face look even more dramatic than it already does so i encourage you to try things like that as well of course for the purposes of this color along I just you know copy my effects and see how much fun it is to add these these different lines to her face but also you know keep your pencils close it keep them physically near you i have just a handful of the pencils that i'm working on with this but they remain close they remain in my working area so if i need to grab a dark gray i don't have to dig through my whole box of pencils looking for a dark gray that will work here that's not going to ruin the whole thing i just grab the dark gray that i know i already was working with ah a trick or treat bag i'm not even going to say anything about that i'm sure it is full of treats no tricks <laughs> i'm the one performing the tricks here on the show you guys are the ones giving me the treats and i thank you kindly for that and our show has almost come to an end we still have a few details to do here on the face notice that i'm adding black now even to the shadows like more drama more drama but on the face no markers only pencils so with my black pencils i am increasing the shade of of all those textured elements on her face and of course the darkest areas are done with a little bit of that black but notice that i'm barely barely touching the surface like you don't need a lot of work here because all the work is already done we're just doing fine tuning this is like photo editing at this point you know a higher exposure lower exposure dodge burn things like that that we're just adding very very gently so all of these final details, very, very smooth details, that's entirely up to you, depending on the look that you're going for. Like I mentioned, I know certain colorists in the community who will have a field day with this and just do all of this texture on the face, super sunken cheekbones, like way more than mine, um, totally dead eyes. Uh, you know, you can even take out her pupils altogether and just paint her eyes solid white. You can do that with white charcoal in the very first step. You can do it with a white gel pen at the very last step or right now. Uh, you know, there are many things that you can do here with the eyes. You can give her big panda eyes, like huge, huge circles around her eyes. And there's still, there's a lot of green on her face, but it's not her skin tone. That's an important distinction to make here. The green here is from the glow. You know, compare it to the green skin tone that I actually teach in the Undead Skin Tones course on Udemy. And that's completely different. Here, the green is coming entirely from that spill from the color behind her. 
but there's also a lot of natural skin tone happening there as natural as it can be for this character um, but very very smooth gradient transitions regardless of the overall drama look one other thing that i want you guys to pay attention to here is how i handled the eyes the eyes are also colored in with that green glow if there is a colorful light source present anywhere at all then everything that was white will be affected by that color one of the effects that will completely ruin the glow effect is leaving the eyeballs white if you leave them white the whole illusion is broken all of a sudden it's not a glow anymore it's her skin tone so things like that are like they may not be intuitive but i hope once again you're taking notes if you are adding glow, any kind of a colorful glow, I teach neon effects as well in the academy. Uh, if you're doing a neon effect or any kind of a, of a colorful glow, like a lantern, a pink lantern or an orange lantern, that color has to be on everything. So it's somehow very intuitive for us to leave eyeballs white, like an Egyptian eye where it's just like solid white, but that's not really how it works in, in reality, you know, in real life or in art so the eyeballs being white doesn't mean that they are glowing white they pick up all the colors they pick up the shadows and it seems very counterintuitive to paint those eyeballs and the teeth also the eyeballs and the teeth i painted that chartreuse color and that's going to be very psychologically difficult for a lot of you guys to to overcome and i completely understand that but trust the process push through just do it my way and see how it works and then that's another thing that I always say in my courses when I teach. First thing, first time around, do it my way, do it along with me, matching as much of, an, of the effect as you can, ideally matching the tools. But like I said, I don't believe in brands. So any one of these effects can be done with any kind of a tool as long as you match the general look. So what I mean is, you know, step by step right now, I'm adding a chartreuse pencil that, so that means a very light yellow or a very light green. You can't replace this color with a dark brown <laughs> or a dark green. You know, it has to be that general family of a color. So first time around, follow along with me as much as you can, given the tools that you have. And then do it again. Because we learn through practice and repetition. Then print that page out again. I always provide all the printable materials for you guys in a PDF format or a JPEG format so that you can save the file and print it as many times as you want on any color or type paper that you want. So after you followed along with me and you've made those mental notes, you've had those physical experiences with certain effects and certain colors, then do it again. But this time infusing it with your own style with your own decisions and even your own colors so on the second time around is the time to experiment if you want this to have a completely different look go for it if you've taken my uh light illusions course and you know how to add bokeh effects to the background try coloring this piece with a bokeh effect if you've done my fantasy glow effects you know try doing this with some other part of her glowing you know or uh, or having uh, a glowing cauldron underneath her or something so that the glow is coming in from below and it's lighting up her face from beneath you know there's just so many ways of doing it maybe you don't even want to add a glow to it at all maybe you just want to color it classically and get it completely different colors maybe you want to follow uh uh, your own color scheme that you like maybe it's all going to be purple and orange i'm a huge fan of purple and orange so this entire piece can be colored like that as well but you know taking some of the advice that i've given you throughout the show i know it's been a lot and this is only part one we still have a lot of this coloring to complete so as i'm adding the final details to the hair my favorite part is coming up right now and that's when we're going to add the final details to the hair and make it really stand out make it really magical bring everything together so as the me on the screen is doing that is adding all the beautiful hair highlights let's talk about what we're going to do next week this page i mean this is super zoomed in right now but at the end of the show i will i will 
I will zoom it out and give you the full page again. Uh, probably all of you already have this page, so you know what it looks like in its full glory. But there's still a lot of information left here. We have the skull and the roses. That's kind of a biggie. You know, I imagine these roses being deep, deep burgundy, like a deep burgundy velvet. But how can we make that work without a green glow, without taking away from it? Or how can we add the green glow without ruining the color of the deep purple roses? Like I have this vision in my head, but I haven't actually done it yet. So uh, I haven't decided on what color to make her gown, her shirt, her her rags, rather. <laughs> In reality, in the movie, it's white. She's wearing like a hospital gown. But I don't know if white is going to work here. Maybe it's going to take away from my composition. Then we have the whole wallpaper to consider. In my Halloween Gothic coloring course, I end the course by showing you all the different ways that you can finalize your piece, including adding frames, cutting something out and putting it on a darker background, how to do it, how to make a decision to do that, all that jazz. So here I haven't decided yet. You know, I want the glow to really stand out. And one of the ways that glow stands out is through high contrast. So adding lots and lots of darkness behind her would be the way to make that green glow around her face really pop. But I also don't want to just shade everything black because what's going to happen with her hair? Her hair is popping out on the side there, out of the frame. If my background is black, how is that going to work? Should we give the hair an outline? Should the background be dark, but not really black? What about that beautiful wallpaper design? I'm kind of digging the little skulls, you know? I want to keep at least some of them there. Should the glow be reflected in the wallpaper? Or should the wallpaper just be flat? All of those questions I am yet to decide. And a lot of these things I decide kind of on the spot. So when I'm inspired to continue this in the next two weeks, I will sit down and I'm sure that most of it will just come to me. And here is our final trick or treat bag. Thank you again so much for all of your treats, for all of your support. I love you guys so much and happy, happy Halloween. This is our last trick or treat bag. So if you're here live, thank you so much. Uh, you don't actually have to wait for the trick or treat bags to appear. You can always drop a super chat or a super thanks. And of course, if you're watching a recording of this later on in the future, then there is no super chat option. There's only the super thanks. That's the big heart button below the video. So also below the video is the video description, which has a whole bunch of links that are useful and that you need to click on and follow. And that includes the community, the academy, our Discord server where everyone is just having a blast. I, I honestly, I didn't expect the Discord server to be this successful, <laughs> but I launched it and now it's like a big party in there. Everyone is chatting, everyone is sharing. And then if you are an extrovert or a person who is very shy about their work, you can go into quieter rooms or even talk to individual students privately or speak to me privately. That's also an option in Discord. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. I can't believe it took me years to actually launch my Discord server. Another one of my brain farts. <laughs> so the link to that is there. What else do I have links to? Obviously the link to my Etsy shop. So if you are the winner of the first giveaway that we had on this show today, follow the Etsy link, browse the shop, and apply your 30% off coupon to any three purchases. They have to be three items in a single purchase, otherwise the coupon won't work. <laughs> and if you're not the winner, if you just want to check out the shop, check out my books. I have two Halloween books that are up there. I have lots of Halloween coloring pages that are up there. And then I just have lots of creepy, beautiful Gothic art up there as well. Wednesday Adams is probably up there as the original piece if she hasn't sold already. Ah, enough promo time. Let's, <laughs> I got distracted. I was hoping I could keep talking through this part, but it's just so cool. I grabbed my green chartreuse. I don't know if anyone picked up on this, but I'm actually using two chartreuse pencils, two different ones. There's a yellow chartreuse and there's a green chartreuse. One is a little bit darker than the other. This is the green chartreuse. And notice I'm adding these green chartreuse lines just freehand but following those lines of the drawing that I mentioned to you that I can still see through the marker, just following those lines with my green chartreuse pencil. And it's just, it's mind blowing. I love this effect. It's so cool. 
And I don't, I'm not going to vouch for every single pencil brand out there. I don't know if Castle Arts will be able to match this effect, but I know that Prismacolors do. So with the Prismacolor Chartreuse, I am very easily able to add these beautiful, clean, light green lines, light chartreuse lines over my black. And this effect to me, like this is the cherry on top. It really brought everything together. Because even though I like that stylistic difference between colored pencils and marker face and hair, it's still a little bit too stark of a difference. And adding just a few of these lines does two things. One, it kind of ties everything together style-wise. And two, it really highlights the fact that we have that green glow. Because for the glow to be present on her face, but to not be present on her hair is impossible. And even though it's a fantasy piece, we do have to keep some elements of reality there so that our audience understands the story that we're telling them. The story that we're telling them is that she's lit by a green light. So adding these wiggly waggly light lines <laughs> to her hair, freehanding them with a chartreuse pencil, that was literally my absolute favorite part. Even though this process, this, this whole process of drawing with green was a little bit stressful for me, it's not my favorite color to work with at all. I prefer, actually I prefer working in black and white, you guys. <laughs> I teach coloring, but like that Wednesday Adams piece is more up my alley. Like I like working with uh, ballpoint pens. I like working with pen and ink. And even when working with colored pencils, I prefer the monochromatic, very dramatic, high contrast look more than, than colorful pencils. Uh, so even that aside, green being my least favorite color, this whole process was a little, a little stressful for me. But now I'm actually enjoying myself adding these little chartreuse lines to the hair. So I hope you guys give it a shot. This, another, another benefit to using markers is if we had colored the whole hair with colored pencils, this effect wouldn't work. We would not be able to add the green chartreuse over the hair if it was done with pencils. It would be impossible. If we were to do this effect with colored pencils 100%, then we would actually paint the whole hair chartreuse and then add the black around it, leaving the streaks. So that's how I would do it if I was doing it completely with pencils. But honestly, these streaks were spur of a moment thing. I didn't plan them. My original plan was just to have her hair solid black and, and that's it. But I don't know. I just, I had a vision, a stroke of genius and then and, and I started adding them. Uh, when adding them over marker, if you're following this effect, I would say, uh, looks like the green is a little crumbly as well. I think my pencils might just be a little too old. Again, like if anyone knows anything about um, Prismacolor pencils and humidity, I think I think that's my problem is, um, you know, they're just getting old. I've had these pencils for a very, very long time. You know, some of them I just buy individual ones, but like my entire green section is still from like 2018. <laughs> they, might have, they might have just rotted away. I kid you not. Like that's how little I use green. Um, but with this particular step, with adding colored pencil lines over your black marker, it's important to not overdo it. You know, it's very easy to add too many of these lines and then the hair just looks kind of like salt and pepper, you know, and we don't want that for this particular look, you know, again, time and place for everything for, for some characters, it may be the look, but here we still want a lot more black and just a few of these lines. Also, the other thing that I think about when I think about the Bride of Frankenstein is lightning, you know, there's always lightning in the... Uh, in the space, in the set. Uh, so um, her hair, you know, it's it's the way that it is, is because of an electrical current. So these kinds of lines make me think of an electrical current. They make me think of a lightning and that's very character fitting specifically for her. So that's, that's kind of where I want to keep it at. I want to keep it just like a few lightnings in her hair and that's it. We definitely don't want to overdo it. Fortunately, if you do overdo it, it's very easy to correct. Just go over the, the green, not with a marker though. I would correct it with a pencil. If I wanted to remove some of these lines or, or clean some of them up, like if they were too fat or, <laughs> or something, or just didn't go exactly in the direction that you wanted them to, I would take them away with a black pencil rather than the black marker because we saw 
that when we add the black marker over the wax pencil, it becomes shiny. So if you try to correct this with a black marker, you will still have that lightning, but now it will be shiny. So I don't know if it's making it any better or actually making it worse. So if you do need to take some of these away, do so with a pencil, not with a marker. And ta-da! She is done i think she looks great she is now complete the face and the hair and the glow are complete i hope you enjoyed the show i hope you will join me for part two which will happen in a couple of weeks i didn't set the date yet on the 14th adrian and i tech tech support and i are going to hunt the solar eclipse so we're packing up the dogs we're packing up the tent and we're driving out to utah hunting the solar eclipse so we'll be out on that adventure and that's going to be a few days on the road. So definitely I won't be doing any live streaming then. But um, after that, the week after the 14th, probably will be part two of the show. Lots of time, lots of time for you guys to catch up, get to this point and invite all of your friends to part two so, so that we can do even more giveaways. And uh, let's see how we're doing on the views. If we do have enough people in the show, then I'm going to play the final clip and we'll do we'll do the final giveaway. If it kind of trailed off and no one is here anymore, then thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for joining. And I hope we can do the final giveaway, the third giveaway of the course next time. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for being here. We'll do a drum roll and we'll see what's going to happen. So. Unfortunately, there aren't enough people in the live chat. So not today, guys. Sorry. But again, maybe you didn't have enough of a warning for the show. Uh, maybe it was just not a good time. We have plenty, plenty of time to plan show number two. So let me know in the community. Let me know in Discord. Let me know in the comments below when is a better day and when is a better time to run this show for part two so that we can plan better and have more people in here. We had a blast regardless. I can't thank you guys enough for all of your treats in my donation jar, for all of your chatter and all of your support. Super huge congratulations to my two winners. I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks.